In this video, we're going to be looking at how to organize our loop deck so that you can understand how best to use profiles, plugins, workspaces, and pages. And if you don't know what all of those are, don't worry, you will do by the end of this video. So this is intended to be the second in a series of videos all about getting up to speed with the loop deck, part of my beginner's guide. I'll leave a link to all of the other videos down in the description. Uh, and really what we're doing here is in the first video, we looked at the device itself. So uh, just in case you aren't familiar, this is what we're talking about. In this case, it is the loop deck live. Uh, and looking at how to go about starting to get set up with this in terms of how to organize all of the different things that you want to do with it and uh, start to build out this sort of framework, if you like, for um, getting it exactly how you want to use it for whatever you want to use it for. So uh, let's come over to the application itself. Uh, I gave a quick overview of the interface in the previous video, but just a quick recap. Um, this is a sort of graphical representation of the device itself. We're going to be programming this with all of the different buttons and actions and things like that that we want to do assigning different things to different buttons on the device uh, simply by choosing them from this list over on the right hand side uh, we've got various different ways to organize here so a number of different uh, these are called plugins which have different groupings of uh, actions that we can assign to any of the buttons uh, and then down here for each of these ones as I go through changing here it has uh, some further subgroupings uh, and we can just literally drag and drop the actions onto the device uh, there are really you know hundreds and thousands of potential combinations of actions that we might want to use on this so we are going to need to get a little bit organized and so the way that we're going to organize our actions on our screen is uh, as well as using pages so I can swipe on the screen and it will swipe through multiple different pages of uh, actions uh, but again I mean even just in that sense uh, you could literally have you know hundreds of pages worth and so it would get a bit hard to manage so there is an easier way though and that is through the use of profiles and workspaces so let's start with profiles uh, think of a profile as a specific use case that you have for the device and in fact if I come up to the menu just up at the top here um, you can see at the moment that I am selected uh, as my main profile uh, and this is the default profile that I've just set up for the purposes of this demonstration if I click in here though uh, it has a little drop down list for us uh, and here you can see the other profiles that I have on this device uh, and this probably then makes it a lot more clear what exactly profiles are for um, because because we do have down here a number of application profiles and so this is basically you know a different use case for the device so uh, when controlling After Effects Adobe Audition uh, and various other different applications down here so I should say there are really uh, two ways to uh, think about profiles and uh, this is clearly demonstrated here um, either you're going to be working with uh, application profiles where they're going to be organized on an application by application basis just like this uh, and in fact you can have it so that it will automatically switch the profile dependent on the application that you are in and indeed that is the default uh, setting so this thing called dynamic mode uh, if I turn that one on uh, if I were to open Adobe After Effects now it would automatically switch to my Adobe After Effects uh, profile or if I was to switch to Adobe Illustrator then it would switch to the Illustrator profile um, so these are basically a profile uh, a collection of actions for each of those applications this is one way to think about working with the loop deck uh, the other way to work with the loop deck is rather than have the uh, device itself uh, switching based on the application that you're in uh, you could create your own profile where you have a you know collection of actions they might be for you know multiple different applications all in the one profile um, You'll see as we go through uh, which one might work best for you. I can certainly see the benefit of having it automatically switching from one to the other. Uh, I personally don't like that approach. The reason being that I'm often uh, spend a lot of time either in meetings on Zoom or on Teams, something like that. I want to use the device to control the Zoom or Teams meeting uh, and I don't want it to switch over to my uh, Microsoft Excel uh, actions whilst I'm on a meeting. However, you know, I might well have Excel as the active application. Uh, so I don't find it useful for it to be switching on my behalf, as it were. Um, also, I do a lot of videos. So obviously videos for this channel, but then recording uh, tutorials and things like that for other training courses that I create. Uh, and so I also therefore want to have it so that the device might be controlling my recording software whilst I am in another active ac application, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm a little bit niche. This doesn't necessarily work well for me. That said, I will obviously go through and explain the whole process of how you go about setting these up and uh, the use case for them because I can totally see the benefit of it working in this way. 
And by the way, it does just seamlessly switch over, seamlessly switch over from one to the other. So when as you are hopping between applications, when you click into uh, Photoshop, for example, if you have this one toggled on, then you've immediately got all of your Photoshop actions to hand. So I, as I say, I can totally see the uh, the use case for it. Um, so here we can see that we've got a number of different applications uh, and these are by the way I should say a lot of these are just there as, as a default when you install the uh, the device and the um, the, the loop deck software uh, they're just sort of pre-populated they're all ready to go in some cases you may have to install a plugin in the application itself so for example in Photoshop there is a a Photoshop plugin that you plug uh, that you install uh, through your Photoshop plugins method. I won't uh, cover that in here because if you're a, a, a pro Photoshop user, you'll know how to install plugins in there um, to actually have them sort of talk to each other, as it were. But let me just come in and then show you uh, what this means, as in uh, switching between profiles. If uh, using Photoshop as an example, if I click on my Photoshop profile here uh, what that's going to do is that's now changed all of the buttons on the screen and in fact if I show you my device uh, once again as always uh, what is being shown on the screen is replicating what's on my device so there is my Photoshop uh, profile if I come back to my uh, desktop just for a moment uh, to the application if I was to go in and change to uh, another one, say Adobe Audition, uh, then it has now got a completely different set of actions on here relating to that particular application. And uh, so that is basically what profiles are. Think of them as like, you know, your collections of uh, actions uh, for whatever the task in hand happens to be. Now, there is actually another layer to this as well, because you may have different things that you do within these applications. So whilst switching profiles actually just changes all of these different actions uh, within a different profile uh, you can have multiple pages so I've mentioned this previously uh, just with a swipe on the screen uh, we can swipe through multiple different pages of actions but even then you might have uh, a lot more actions than you can contain on uh, multiple pages uh, and you want to have different sort of work modes within that particular software well uh, just using this one as an example and this is as I say one of the sort of pre-installed ones um, we have then got workspaces so a profile is is, think of it as you know the application if you like um, but then the workspace is sort of different modes of working perhaps within that application so a workspace if I click in here you can see we've got multiple different uh, workspaces so uh, in this case they've named it editing track states and mixer uh, view file and various other different ones so different things that you might be doing within the application itself now what that's going to do is if I uh, change to one of these other ones let me just pick one at random uh, this view one um, you can see that once again it's changed the buttons but I should say that all this is changing is the dials here and these uh, touch screen buttons here the buttons down at the bottom are basically basically sort of global buttons within that particular um, uh, profile so uh, the workspaces do not affect these buttons down at the bottom and that's quite handy because uh, or, or purposeful I should say because the buttons are then used to actually switch that or can be used to assign to switch between different workspaces so here that list of workspaces we had up here here editing track states and mixer workspaces windows view and so on and um, what they've done is they've actually assigned those to these buttons so I can also just press the button and switch between these various workspaces by just clicking on the buttons on the device down there so that's why these buttons down at the bottom are basically uh, fixed per profile uh, and don't change with the workspace rather they can be used for navigation and indeed that is the main way that I found that I use these buttons is generally I'm using these ones for kind of navigating around the device itself and they seem to fit quite well into that uh, that particular use case um, so you may not be using Adobe Audition so some of these things might not make sense to you in fact I don't really use Adobe Audition <laughs> it's just one of the ones that are in here so uh, let me just come out of that and show you that uh, although there are a number of applications already sort of pre-installed with profiles uh, and this comes back to the you know the sort of heritage of this device really and the loop deck is that it has got a real sort of strong um, uh, bent towards the uh, Adobe Creative Suite and uh, editing applications and things like that so you'll find that all the Adobe suite uh, profiles are sort of pre-installed in there 
uh, and some of the other you know creative ones Ableton Live and so on as well uh, but if you do want some other applications and you can't see them in here uh, we can also come down to the bottom and search for more because there are a number of others that have been pre-made for us so specific profiles already made up for us so just come down to here more app profiles uh, again this is specifically if you are using this in the process or in the the way of having it switch between these things on an app you know basis automatically so if i click on find more app profiles what that will do is open up the loop deck mark loop deck marketplace <laughs> you can also get to that from the menu just up at the top here um but yeah if you click down here what that's going to do is open up this separate window which is the loop deck marketplace and in here you can find profiles plugins which we'll come to a little bit later and icon packs but this is what we're looking at just at the moment is the profiles and here you'll find a list of uh, different profiles you can see whether they are available uh, for the Mac or the PC uh, so the little icons there signifying which ones are available uh, if it is a Windows only and you are on the Mac then you'll notice it says not available for Mac and uh, vice versa if it is a Mac only and you are on a PC um, but basically you can just scroll down here have a look at the different plugins it'll tell you who they're by so some of them are by Loop Deck themselves have made the uh, the plugins sorry the profiles I should say I don't want to get the nomenclature wrong there um, and then some of these are by uh, third parties as well so this one is by somebody other than Loop Deck have uh, created these so the marketplace is going to be somewhere where people can you know add in their their, their own uh, plugins profiles and icon packs um, at uh, at some point as well uh, this is the early stages of the marketplace so currently it's signifying 30 profiles 10 plugins and 43 icon packs I know that just last night when this was released there were six plugins so they are actually actively adding things in as we speak uh, if you want to install any of these then it's just a case of really clicking the install button pretty obvious really you can click on these by the way these little sort of tiles if you like it will give you a bit more information about it tell you about the uh, the developer an overview telling you what the uh, different shortcuts are uh, it'll tell you the compatibility devices as well so this is saying loop deck live um, really this is perhaps slightly misleading because the uh, loop deck live the things that you have that work for that will also technically work for the loop deck CT because it's just but it's not going to use the full device similarly there are some in here that say they are only compatible with the loop deck CT uh, because they have got you know extra functionality linked to those uh, you know those other the larger dial for example or those other buttons but in actual fact they still work on the loop deck live because uh, it's just that they only use the the buttons that are on the loop deck live portion of the loop deck ct if that makes sense <laughs> so um all of that is to say if you do see this compatibility um just take that with a grain of salt is my initial estimation at this because uh, some from my experience uh, in the last uh, 24 hours of trying this out uh, they do seem to work so <laughs> i'll just say that um so then uh, also you can uh, then just come and click on the install button here as I say, if you are back in this list, you can install them from there as well. So clicking on install, it will, if you come back to the regular application, you'll see that it is installing. Uh, it is going to actually prompt you to link it to the application though. So uh, this is asking me to select the application. So this was the uh, Visual, Visual Studio code. And so what I need to do is actually just go and find that particular application, which is not on this Mac. <laughs> it's on my other Mac. Never mind. Uh, so what you do, though, is you would just pick out the application that it was assigned to um, and then just click on OK. And I'm just going to cancel this one out. But that basically would then install that profile so that whenever you have that particular application open, that profile would open up as well. Um, so that's how you install basically a completely new profile from that uh, that list from the marketplace. Uh, you can also create your own though. So if you wanted to create your own application profile, so maybe something that isn't in the marketplace, something that isn't already in this list here, but there's an application that you want to have your own set of actions when it opens, we can always create a new one just by clicking on these little three dots next to the application profile. Uh, and here you can see the uh, ones we've got. Uh, if you want to, if you if you don't use 
use any of these. So maybe I'm not using Lightroom. I can just uncheck that, click on OK, and it will uh, remove it from the list. So now we don't have that Lightroom one in there. Um, but yeah, coming back to this, this is where we've got the uh, list. What we can do, I'll just uh, take those ones out as well because I'm not using those. Uh, click on Add Application, basically, uh, just like that. Uh, and then we can select the application name. So uh, let me just think what I might add from here. Uh, I'm just going to choose this one. <laughs> I'm not going to create any <laughs> any shortcuts for my loop deck for my one password that would completely uh, defeat the object but for the purposes of this I will just uh, create that and then just click on OK uh, and that has now created a new um, profile for in this case one password be deleting that one in a moment <laughs> but now basically whenever I go into one password um, then it would uh, it would switch to that and you can see how it has pulled in the app icon as well there so it just just bring it into the uh, the full list uh, yeah assigning passwords to <laughs> one button presses it's not probably a good idea is it but never mind um, so that is how you uh, you create your um, your own um, uh, profiles for applications so that is uh, basically just a uh, quick uh, look at the way that uh, we can uh, work with uh, workspaces and so on. Um, but I will just come over to the uh, um, uh, the other way of doing things. So uh, <laughs> rather <laughs> how we can work with profiles, I should say, um, and have them automatically switch on an application basis. But let's just come and look if we just want to build something out ourselves and just have it basically fixed and we be in total control of uh, how it's sort of changing from one set of actions to another. Uh, then the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use this thing over here, this sort of main profile. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that that one is toggled off. So uh, basically, if you're not going to use dynamic mode and have it automatically changing, then what you're going to do is come in over here to this uh, default profile. Um, you can actually, um, with all of these, although this says that these are the uh, the application profiles and this is the main profile, um, there is actually multiple profiles within these. So uh, for each of these ones, if I was to come into one password, for example, click on the little three dots, there is my one profile, my one password profile that I've just created. I could actually create a second one called one password two, uh, just like that. And so now we've actually got two profiles uh, under the one heading if you see what I mean so for the application we can have multiple different profiles as well uh, this is where it starts to get to be honest with you a little bit confusing um, but if you come into your main profile uh, like this then um, we can actually have uh, by clicking on the three dots we can have multiple at sort of main profiles as well. So these are all profiles which basically aren't going to change when the application opens basically. So this is how we can have still have multiple profiles um, but just not have them automatically changing. It's just to me not immediately clear that this is an option from this menu. So I'm just mentioning it because it could be a little bit of a source of uh, confusion. Uh, once you are in this main profile <laughs> section and you've got one of these profiles selected uh, and by the way to create new profiles it's just the same as I've shown you already you just click on the three dots except that this time we're going to click on those three dots up next to the main profile as opposed to application profile uh, and then from here we can create our new uh, our new profile uh, from there so we're just going to click on this add profile. There's another layer of potential confusion here, which is normal profiles versus simplified profiles. Uh, all you need to know about that is that a normal profile is the ones that I'm going to be talking about all the way through this uh, tutorial series. Those are the ones that uh, have the workspaces and pages and things like that. A simplified profile basically just doesn't have the workspaces. So it's basically just a single page or a single profile with uh, still multiple pages, but you don't have that workspaces option. Uh, so I'm just going to keep talking about the normal profiles though from here on in. Um, so clicking on the add profile is how we could add either an empty profile or if you click on add default profile um, that's basically what we've got here it's going to have a series of actions already on there so it's going to be pre-populated with open chrome gmail whatsapp twitter uh, some media control keys here for play and pause and things like that uh, and then also some other shortcuts to various different things an emoji picker uh, and some keys for the uh, the calculator and stuff like that so if you are wondering when you are going to create a new profile uh, what the uh, default profile is that was it that we've just seen uh, and so really you know if you've got one of those 
profiles maybe that might be useful but you're probably just going to start want to start with all of the other profiles that you create as a just a completely blank canvas I'm going to guess so uh, all you do there is just click on this one add empty profile uh, just this one up at the top and then you're going to give it a name so I'll give this a uh, nice simple name <laughs> new profile uh, so that we can uh, know where we're talking what we're talking about so that is the one that we're going to be uh, working in as we do this little demonstration of building this all out. I should say that as well, um, if you are, again, going down this route of not having it automatically switching by app application, um, then you do have in the menu bar, there is a little uh, loop deck icon. Uh, and when you click on that, there'll be a drop down and you do have a change profile option. And this basically lists all of those different profiles that you've got underneath the heading of main profile so we've got the uh the uh, the default one that we're on to begin with uh we've got this uh default profile there and then the one that we've got now which is called new profile so i can just sort of switch back and forth between those from the menu bar itself so that's how you would be able to sort of change between different profiles uh if you were just you know as i say being in full control of what was being displayed on your device <laughs> so uh let me come back to this one though the uh, originally titled new profile and this is where we are now we are have got a completely blank canvas except for the clock it always insists on putting the clock there um i'm not sure how many people would use a uh, you know with a limited amount of screen real estate I hate that term actually in this context but uh, with a limited amount of space and buttons I'm not sure who would just have a, a clock on their device uh, but every time you cr create a new blank profile Loop Deck always puts the clock there uh, you can just click these three buttons and then just click on unassign so that's basically how to delete anything from those uh, button spaces we don't want a clock there we've also got something assigned to this particular uh, button here so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that as well uh, and with these ones uh, rather than unassign we've got this little cross next to them so this is how we can delete the action from that uh, that wheel so essentially we are now in our new profile and we've just got the one workspace and we've also got nothing assigned to these actions and there are no pages or anything like that it's essentially a completely blank canvas and, and so really the next step that we're going to uh, look at is how to actually start to add in all of the different uh, actions and things like that uh, and start to you know look at how we go about programming this because uh, as you can see there are a lot of different actions that we can potentially add and there's actually a few different ways that we can go about doing this and things can get uh, uh, we can add complexity to it with multi actions and macros and stuff like that so in the next video which is coming up next I'm going to be talking about exactly that where we go from here in terms of building out the actions in our profiles 